Let's close our eyes for prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name for this wonderful day. We thank you, Lord, because there is a new chapter being opened in every life. You are taking us on a new journey. And I pray, Lord, every boy, every girl, every youth here will become gloriously wonderful in Jesus' name. That place you are taking us to, Lord, we pray, none of us will miss it in Jesus' name. Begin anew with us today. Yeah. Lord, we pray you shower your blessings upon your children in Jesus' name. Yeah. I pray that none of us will ever remain the same. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Yeah. Thank you very much. You can sit down. We're looking at Psalm 18, and I'm reading from verse 35. Psalm 18, verse 35. It says, Thou has also given me the shield of thy salvation and thy right hand as holding me up and thy gentleness has made me great. I want to examine the scriptures with you on faith for greatness. Faith for greatness. You will be great. Yeah. Here the psalmist said, thy gentleness has made me great. In fact, as I look at this psalmist, I see that, number one, God made him great. Number two, he became greater. And then, the greatest even came. We're looking at First Chronicles chapter 11. Reading from verse 9 there. First Chronicles chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse 9. So David works greater and greater. For the Lord of hosts was with him. The gentleness of the Lord, the greatness of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, the grace of God made him great. But he didn't just stop at being great. You will not stop at being great. Yeah. You are going to become greater in Jesus' name. Yeah. Whatever it is you have got today, you are going to get more. Yeah. Whatever level you are today, you are going to rise higher. Yeah. You will soar like an eagle. And here David said, Lord, your gentleness made me great, but then he was greater and greater. How about you? How about me? How about those of us who are here? Because now we're living on the side of the New Testament, the New Covenant. It tells us in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. 1 John chapter 4. And here it says in verse 4, And ye of God little children praise the lord once you are born again you have god once your sins are forgiven you have god and once the lord has said my grace is sufficient for you coming into your life you have god you have got little children it says and you have overcome them you will overcome because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world always remember that whatever challenges we face Whatever home or house situation may confront us, it says greater you see that is in us than he that is in the world. Great, that's number one. Greater, that's number two. Greatest, that's number three. You are going on a journey. You will not stop your journey halfway. In Matthew chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 4. Matthew chapter 18, I'm reading there from verse 4. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. He said, whosoever therefore will humble himself, that means the choice is yours. The decision is in your hand. You can become great. Yours is the decision. You can become greater. And yours is the choice. You can become the greatest. It says, whosoever. And this is not for any special person. It's not for any special few. It's not for so and so, such and such. It's for the whosoever. What is the whosoever here today? The Lord will do it. Yeah. He will confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. 
He said, whosoever, you just make up your mind. And you say, I'm not going to be like the riffraffs. I'm going not going to be like the Dick and Harry. I'm not going to be like every ordinary person. I'm, I'm making my choice tonight. And then I hook up with God. I link up with God. He links up with me. And Jesus Christ has promised that if I can just humble myself, accept the word of God, receive the word of God, like a little child will receive the word of God. He said, I will not only become great and greater, I'll be the greatest. You'll be greatest in Jesus' name. Amen. Faith for greatness. And thank God you're still young. Thank God because the rising is before you. Thank God because you have a dream already. Thank God because the whole of your life is still stretched ahead. There is more to come than what you have seen in the past. There is still more journey to go through than anything you have ever done. And this is the best time to think of the faith that makes us great, that makes us greater, that makes us the greatest. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the promise of greatness. The promise of greatness. And when God makes a promise, he has the power to carry it out. When God makes a promise, he has the wherewithal. He has the ability. He has the substance. He has the skill to carry it out. He gives us a promise and he says, you will be great. You will be great. There is no doubt about it. It is coming. It is coming your way. Yeah. Number one, the promise of greatness. Number two is the process of greatness. The process of greatness. That is the path towards greatness. That is, I move, I take a step, I take a step one day at a time. One week at a time. One month at a time. One year at a time. As I'm just going on and going on, I don't look back. I say that all the grounds have covered. Praise the Lord. There's still more grounds to cover. I take another step. I take another subject, I go to another class, I take another exam, and a little at a time, a little at a time, the process of greatness, where we'll get there. Number three is partnership for greatness. Partnership for greatness. There is somebody who has promised us, he has promised you and promised me that he will hold our hand. He knows the way. He knows the path. He's done it before. He's done it for other people. He said, I made David great, I'll make you great. I make Jabez great, I'll make you great. I make Joseph great, I'll make you great. I make Daniel great, I'll make you great. I make John Wesley great, I'll make you great. I made all these other people great just by hooking up with me, lining up with me, linking with me. And because of that partnership, they became great. And you can have the same partnership. God is no respecter of persons. What he's done for all the people, he will do for you even today in Jesus' name. Number one, give me number one. Promise the promise of greatness, give me number two. The process, the process of greatness, give me number three. Partnership, Partnership for greatness. The way you have repeated it, that's the way to be repeated in your life. I'm looking at Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. And I'm reading there from verse 1. Genesis chapter 12. And we're looking at verse 1. See what the Lord has done and see what the Lord has promised. When Abraham was a nobody, God promised him you'll be somebody. When Abraham did not know anything, God said, many people all over the world, in many generations will know you. When Abraham did not even have any way he could conquer his enemies, the Lord said, I'll be an enemy to your enemies, I'll be a friend to your friends. And when, when you think I don't have anything, you have everything. When you think I am nobody, God will make you somebody. When you say I've not been anywhere, God will take you to the place you ought to be and you will get there in Jesus' name. We're looking at this, Genesis chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 1. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. The promise of greatness, the promise of greatness. And praise the Lord, this is all for the seed of Abraham. This is for the seed and the, and the offspring of Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, reading there from verse 1. Here is what the Lord is telling us concerning Abraham and concerning you of the seed of Abraham. We're looking at Genesis chapter 12. And I'm reading there from verse 1. Genesis chapter 12, reading there from verse 1. It says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, 
and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land which that I will show thee. Uh, the Lord first of all said, I want to do something for you, but you know, the greatness I want to give you, this place where you are now, the place was called all of Chaldees. He said, it's too small, it's too confined. I cannot pour my greatness upon you here. I'm going to take you to a better place, to a greater place, to a higher place, and to a wider place. It's only when you get there, I'm going to bring that greatness upon you. You know, many young people don't understand when the Lord say, come out of where you are now. Come out of where you are doing now. They say, I don't want to live where I am because I feel so comfortable here. You know what? The Lord cannot pour his greatness upon you where you are now. If a person is in sin, if a person is doing evil, the Lord cannot pour all his greatness. Don't you know God is? He's almighty. Don't you know who he is? He's omnipotent, all-powerful. Don't you know who he is? He's all-sufficient. Don't you know who he is? He's from eternity to eternity. He's the eternal one. And he says, I want to pour my greatness upon you, but where you are now, I cannot pour my greatness upon you, therefore come out from where you are. And look at this in verse 2, and I will make of thee a great nation. I will make of thee a great nation. I will make of thee a great nation. Uh, the Lord said, my greatness is so great, it cannot, it will not be occupied in this place. It cannot, this place cannot occupy. Therefore, Abraham, cooperate with me. Cooperate with God, something is going to happen. Yeah. I said, cooperate with God, something is going to happen. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, many, many young people that go to church, they go to church and they say, well, I don't understand. God said he will do this for me as not, because they didn't cooperate with God. He said, come out. They stayed there. And God said, as long as you are there, I cannot pour that greatness upon you. Therefore, I'm expect come out. When you come out, that greatness will run after you. Yeah. That prosperity will run after you. Yeah. That success will run after you. Yeah. Triumph and victory will run after you. If you hear of the adult that said, I told them to raise up their hands and I'm going to anoint their hands. And then she, he had, you know, his father today, a 17 year old girl, that one leg was shorter than the other. And then I anointed that hand with the Holy Ghost. And then he went back home. And when he got back home, he said, he said, my daughter, I brought something for you. And, and the daughter thought he was going to maybe biscuit. There's something greater than biscuit. Or maybe it's going to be Tom Tom. There's something greater than Tom Tom. Maybe he's going to bring a sugar. There's something greater than sugar. There is something great coming upon your life. And then that anointed hand, the father laid that hand upon that daughter. And it appeared nothing happened. But I'm telling you something has happened already. And then it was just maybe the following, just that day or the following day, as they were just going like this, all of a sudden, an explosion of miracle. And that miracle just came upon the child like this. And the shorter leg grew out. Now I tell you, when I tell you to raise up those hands and you raise and anoint that hand, any exam that anointed hand will take, any sin that anointed hand will touch, is going to succeed in Jesus' name. We've got a foretaste of it already. We've got an example of it already. And then I reserve the greater thing waiting for you. Now, let's, let's go now to Abraham. It says in Abraham, it says, I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great. That is yours. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee. And curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God will bless you. Yeah. And then all the people around the members of your family, through you, the Lord will bless them in Jesus' name. You know, somebody will say, but that is Abraham. That is Abraham. Let me read to you from Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. I'm reading here from verse, uh, I'm reading from verse 16. Romans chapter 4, verse 16. It says, therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end for the purpose the promise might be sure to all the seed he said what he gave unto abraham is going to give to all the seed and you have the seed of abraham if you believe on the lord jesus christ you have the seed of abraham and that blessing of abraham is going to come upon you in jesus name 
it will make you great. I said it will make you great. Say, the Lord will make me great. Let the whole earth hear. Let those who are deaf hear. It will be unto you according to your faith in Jesus' name. I come, I come to point number two. Now point number two, the process of greatness. The process of greatness. That is, when I talk about the process, it means I start number one, number two, number three, and I'm going to take a step at a time, a day at a time, an exam at a time, a lesson at a time, a class at a time, an information at a time, a decision at a time, a week at a time, a month at a time, a year at a time, and Praise the Lord, you are there. Amen. When I when I talk about the process of it, the process of greatness, you see, there are some people, there are some giants, they are mighty and powerful, but they are sleeping. And because the giant is sleeping, you'll think the giant is weak. And because the giant is not reading, you'll think the giant is ignorant. And because the giant is not making any effort at all, you think the giant cannot achieve. And therefore, the very first thing is bestir 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 yourself that is b e s t i r bestir that means you wake up you shake yourself you rub the sleep out of your face and then you look around and say why am i here stir up yourself stir up yourself in fact that's what paul the apostle told timothy he said timothy why are you lying down there you, 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 you you're missing your steps and then you're still laid back behind bestir yourself number one bestir number two begin begin that is the things i should have done don't worry i've not done them but i'm going to start today the book i ought to read the form I ought to take, the connections I ought to make, the place I ought to go, the class I ought to take, the internet I need to understand, the computer I need to know how to operate, the language I need to perfect, my grammar that I need to brush up, my maths that I need to do, although I'm behind, number one, be stir, be stir yourself, number two, begin number three behold 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 the lord is by your side and he said i will help you there's no subject too difficult for me it might be difficult there's no journey that is too tough for me it might be tough for you there's no mountain that is too high for me it might be high for you but i am here by your side behold behold and then number four believe you believe the lord you believe what God says about you is true. You believe I can do what he says I can do. I believe I can be who he says I can be. I believe I can get to the place he said I can get to. I believe I have what he says I have. I believe his promises are mine. I believe his power cannot fail. Believe. Number five is behave. You see, there is a way successful people behave. There's a way failures behave. There's a way courageous people behave. There's a way timid people, fearful people behave. There is a way rich people behave. There's a way poor people behave. There is a way geniuses, those who are genius, there's a way they behave. And the people who are ignoramuses, the people that know next to nothing, they don't know their left from their right, there's a way they behave. There is a way childish, ignorant people behave. There's a way mature people behave. And if you know that God is raising you and lifting you up, then you behave according to your calling you behave according to the greatness the lord is going to bring before you i pray the lord that you will be a different person yeah. and then number six become 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 you know some people they say this way they say fake it until you make it fake it until you make it what they mean is you don't feel great behave like you are great you don't think great behave like you are great 
People don't call you great yet, but behave. Behave as if what God said is true because they cannot lie. Behave as if what God said has been fulfilled about my life and behave like that. You know, don't behave like a poor fellow, like a sinner, like a backward fellow, like a non entity that somebody doesn't know anything. You behave it and then you become it. That's why I say number six is become. Number seven, be better. I said be better. I said be better. Who am I talking to? Heaven is recording it in Jesus' name. Number one, be stir, be stir yourself. It's in Second Samuel. Second Samuel. I'm looking at chapter five. Second Samuel chapter five, and I'm reading from verse twenty-four. Second Samuel chapter five, and we're reading it from verse twenty-four. It says, "And let it be." I said, "Let it be." I said, "Let it be." When thou hearest the sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt bestir thyself. Wake up yourself. Tell yourself, my soul, why are you cast down? My soul, why are you discouraged? My soul, why are you lying down as if there is no future? There is a future for me. I said there is a future for me. Arise, awake, and shake yourself from the dust. That's, where, that's what the Lord told him. He said, you bestir yourself. Number two. What's number two? Begin, begin to do something. Begin to do something. In Ecclesiastes chapter, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. How do you finish if you never begin? How do you get there to your destination if you never even get started? But the secret of getting to that great place, that final place, is to begin. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Start it, begin it, and concentrate, and stay at it, and stick to it. Stay there, and don't you ever give up. And then when you greet your teacher, when you grab that thing, and say, I begin, I'm not going to let go i will not let go until i finish whatsoever thy hand find it to do do it with thy might then it says for there is no work no device no knowledge no wisdom in the grave whither thou goest that means then begin to do something number three is to behold you know this passage john chapter 1 verse 29 john chapter 1 chapter chapter 1 verse 29 john chapter 1 verse 29 it says and then, then the next day john said jesus coming unto him and he said behold and he said behold and he said behold behold the lamp of god which taketh away the sin of the world many people they limit that verse of scripture behold the lamp of god we take it away number one the sin of the world number two the sickness of the world number three the sorrow of the world number four the suffering of the world behold the lamb that takes away all our shame behold the lamb that takes away all our judgment behold the lamb that takes away all our condemnation behold the lamb that takes all our bad luck behold the lamb that takes away all our curses behold the lamb that takes away all our eternal punishment and the very root of everything is seen that's why john said behold the lamb behold the lamb behold the lamb your savior behold the lamb your sanctifier behold the lamb the power of god in man behold the lamb the one that sacrificed and he died so that you may live behold the source of abundant life behold the one that gives us success behold behold the lord and you look away from satan you look away from all those enemies you look away from all the people threatening you you look at the friend of sinners you look at the savior of sinners and you look at the one that has come to rescue you out of the muddy clay out of the muddy pit where you are and he says i'm going to take you to the mountain top behold him you behold the man you behold the king you behold the lord and you behold your redeemer it says behold 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 and what you behold you'll become like that in jesus name and then number four is to believe. Is to believe. Is to believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. 
Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. This will take you anywhere you want to get to. This will take you to the top of any mountain. This will take you to the, to the end of any journey. This will take you to any place you want achievement. In Mark chapter 9, Mark chapter 9, Mark chapter 9, verse 23. It says in verse 23, Mark chapter 9, it says, If thou canst believe. If thou canst believe, all things tell me, all things are possible to him that believeth. All things, all things, all things, all things. Lord, do you mean that I can succeed? All things are possible. Do you, do you mean that I can be healthy? All things are possible. Do you think I can have dominion? All things are possible. You mean I can be happy? All things are possible. You, you, you are saying that I can rejoice and rejoice and rejoice evermore. All things are possible. You are saying that I can overcome any difficulty. All things are possible. Just believe. Only believe if thou canst believe believe all things are possible to him that believeth who is him that believeth i'm the one i said i'm the one i said i'm the one and whatever i pray the lord will answer that prayer and then and then now it says number number five is to behave behave i'm looking at first samuel chapter 18 first samuel chapter 18 i'm reading there from verse 5 first samuel chapter 18 and we're looking at it from verse 5 first samuel chapter 18 chapter 18 and then we're reading from verse 5 here's what it says and david went out whithersoever saul sent him and behaved himself wisely and behaved himself well hey, that's so the, the people who succeed in life that's what they do they behave them themselves wisely they behave according to their calling they behave according to their commission they behave according to their crowning because you see the lord had anointed david he had crowned him although saul did not see the crown and and the man the man showed i'm a different person i'm not like every ordinary person every dick and harry i am different and that difference you can see here he behaved himself wisely look at verse 14 in verse 14 it says and david behaved 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 himself wisely in all his ways and the lord was with him and then become become you are becoming in romans chapter 6 romans chapter 6 i'm reading there from verse 22 romans chapter 6 and we're looking at verse 22 romans chapter 6 verse 22 it says but now being made free from sin and become servants to god and become servants to god and become servants to god ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life number seven is be better that's you i said that's you i said that's you your today will be better than yesterday your tomorrow will be better than today Ezekiel chapter 36 I'm reading there from verse 11 Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 11 and I will multiply upon you man and beast and they shall increase and, and bring fruit and I will settle you out of your old estates and will do better unto you than your beginning the Lord said I will do better unto you than your beginnings and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Now point number one is the promise of greatness. Point number two is the process of greatness. Tell me number three. Partnership for greatness. When the Lord is with you and you are with the Lord, there's no other way. You're going to be great. When you put your hands in the hands of the Lord, you put your face in the Lord Jesus Christ, there's no other alternative. You're going to be great because that partnership with the Lord will make you great. I'm looking at Genesis chapter 39. Genesis chapter 39, and I'm reading here from verse 3. What the Lord did for Joseph, he'll do for you. Yeah. And his master saw, your master will see. Yeah. Your teachers will see. Your parents will see. Yeah. Your co-tenants will see. Yeah. Everybody around you are going to see something. Yeah. It says, and the master saw that the Lord was with him. 
and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his son. That's all, that's all, that's all. The Lord made all that he did to prosper in his son. Not only that your, your, your teachers will see, I will see. Yeah. What the Lord will do in your life, I will see. Yeah. Because that greatness the Lord has announced to us is coming. Yeah. I said it's coming. Yeah. Everybody say it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Who is he coming to? Me. I said, who is he coming to? Me. Why don't you rise up and tell the Lord that greatness is coming? It's coming to me. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming to me. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming to me. I link up with the Lord. I link up with. I believe. I believe. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is my Savior. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is my Redeemer. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He cancels failure from my life. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He cancels all my discouragement. I believe. I believe. I believe. And if I can only believe all things are possible to him who believes. I am a believer. I am a believer. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. My Savior. My Redeemer. My Lord. Is the lift up of my head. Is the one that has promoted me. Lord I believe. Lord I believe. Lord I believe. Lord, Lord, I believe it will be so. It will be so. It's so unto you according to your faith. So unto you according to your faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Greatness has come. Where has it come to? Lift up those hands. Keep them up as high as you can. You are going to be high. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you have given us a promise of greatness and we know that your promise will never fail. Upon every child of God here, every brother, every sister, young ones, oh Lord, I pray, you cancel failure from their lives in Jesus' name. All the setbacks, all the discouragement, oh Lord, I pray, cancel them in Jesus' name. Lord, from nothing to everything from a nobody to somebody i pray lord you confirm it in their lives in jesus name upon that boy upon that girl oh lord whether it's in the family or it's outside or it's in the forest or it's in the sea or it's in the night in the day i cancel every negative thing in jesus name and Lord, I pray from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, I pray there will be healing. There will be deliverance. I, hope, I pray the fire of the Holy Ghost will burn every negative thing away from them in Jesus' name. That bad dream, that negative dream, I cancel it right now. That threatening of the enemy, I cancel it right now. Every curse, every yoke, I break everything in Jesus' name. Lord, fulfill your promise upon everyone. And Lord, as they put their hands in your hand, and Lord, as they, as they bestir themselves, as they begin, as they behold, as they believe, as they behave, as they become, and then they will become better in Jesus' name. Lord, their enemies will see. Their friends will see. Their parents will see. Their teachers will see. The church of the living God will see that these are the people you have your favor upon and Lord that greatness they will have it in Jesus name great greater greatest great greater greatest great greater greatest fulfill it in Jesus name we thank you because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray.